Dear students, in this module, I am going to introduce secondary structures to you and we already know that the secondary structures are formed after the primary structure of our protein is in place. So, let's start. The primary structure of a protein or the one prime structure defines the overall properties of the protein. However, that is not the end of the story. The one prime structure upon the formation leads to a higher level of interactions between the side chains in each amino acid constituting the one prime structure. This leads to a secondary structure or the two prime structure of a protein. The two prime structure of the protein is very important because it gives rise to several unique and unforeseen properties from the primary structure. In this diagram, you see the protein folding process here. After the primary structure is provided here, then this primary structure or the amino acid polypeptide chain folds in order to take forms of these secondary structures. The amino acids coming together or assembling together, they are giving rise to such properties that lead to the folding of the protein onto itself. So, in effect, the very long amino acid chains, they condense into very small secondary structures as shown here. So, therefore, this process is called folding. And protein folding gives rise to several secondary structures that we will see one by one. The foundation for these newer properties or the newer interactions are the fact that the C terminus and the N terminus of each amino acid are actually charged. So, if a negatively charged C terminus can interact with a positively charged N terminus, then they can make a hydrogen bond. Now we know that each amino acid in the very big protein sequence contains one C terminus and one N terminus. So if each amino acid has both of them and that the polypeptide chain contains multiple such amino acids, then there is a high probability of the formation of hydrogen bonds between negatively charged C termini and positively charged N termini of different amino acids. So, with this foundation, the amino acids, they come together in the form of hydrogen bonds. Here you see a hydrogen bond that has been formed between the N terminus and the C terminus of a polypeptide chain that is given here. So, if you have such interactions occurring, then it means the protein will come together and condense or simply fold. So once the protein is folded, then it becomes very compact and can form a secondary structure. In this example that is in front of you, an alpha helix substructure or secondary structure is being formed. So, once this C terminus binds with this N terminus and that this process repeats for every fourth C and N terminus, then it can form an alpha helix or simply something like this. If you look at it from the top, it looks like a wheel and if you look at it sideways, then it looks like a helix. The helix is shown here. As I just mentioned, that the helix is formed. So, if you look at it from the top, it looks like a circle. But if you look at it from the sideways, it looks like a helix. So, this is formed if every fourth C terminus is bonded, hydrogen bonded with the fourth N terminus. So, the difference between these two should be about Four residues or 3.6 residues. Therefore, an alpha helix 
is formed. There are many alpha helices in the protein structures if you look at the overall structures of the proteins and it is redundantly used for in almost all the proteins. So this is the first secondary structure or the substructure that we will study in the protein folding process. There is another type of secondary structure that is also there. It's called the beta sheets. So it is formed if an amino acid sequence or the one prime structure has another one prime structure coming on top of it and the oxygen here the C terminus and the N terminus they make a hydrogen bond. So in this way two polypeptide chains can be glued together by hydrogen bonds. So this is called the beta sheet and of course it can happen between multiple polypeptide chains. So in effect this will form a bundle of beta sheets. So this is the second two prime structure that is there and is very important and is equally redundantly used in the formation of protein structures. So in conclusion now we know two forms of secondary structures that make protein tertiary structures. So the two prime structures are the alpha helices and beta sheets. They come about from the primary structure and they give rise to tertiary structures. So there are several other types of these structures as well that we will study in later modules.